Bonjour mesdames et messieurs and welcome to episode 15 of my Photoshop Lightroom and Photography Tips. My name is Sergio Melli, I'm a French photographer living in Paris. I know I say that all the time but I think it's fun. Anyway, so la in last week's episode, um, I showed you my workflow on uh, taking a regular shot from Venice, Italy, which you can see here. And just using Lightroom, we turned it into this sort of artistic black and white with selective color with only the red and the rest black and white, as you can see here. That was fun. I invite you to check it out if you have not seen it yet. This week, uh, I went with the famous Scott Kelby to the Mont Saint-Michel, a beautiful place. I had never been there before, and uh, shame on me, Scott was joking about that all the time. And we went in the Mont Saint-Michel, we had an awful day, but just when it was sunset, the clouds went away and we had a great light. So we walked around the Mont Saint-Michel, which is full of quicksand, very dangerous, Scott and me, and uh, we did a lot of panos of the Mont Saint-Michel, and I want to show you how we got these panos. So here is the original shots, you know, it's a 5-6 photo pano, which you can see here. I'm going to retouch it in Lightroom, that's the result that you can see, the retouch version, and then I'm going to photo merge it, and then I'm going to take it back into Lightroom and retouch it again. So that's the final result we're going to have. So I say let's get started and let's do this panel tutorial. Hello and bonjour to this new tutorial on Lightroom 4 and a little bit of Photoshop CS6. So this is a panel that I did with my friend Scott Kelby in the Mont Saint-Michel. Uh, this is all the photos you see. All of them are pretty underexposed. I have this uh, way about going where I like to underexpose a bit my photos so I can get all the details in the sky because I'm crazy about crazy skies. So that's the way I work. Now I want to show you how I did the final photo. Uh, it was quite an adventure because you see the Mont Saint-Michel is like an island. It's an island uh, by the um, with sand all over and it's full of quicksand. And we had the right light was on this side so we had to rock around it with Scott and we got caught in some quicksand, which I had never seen before. And it's quite impressive to see. So, you know, some photos are easier to be taken than others. This one was a bit harder, but what a pleasure being with Scott and what a pleasure being in such an incredible place. So, be, after the touristic information, let's get to it. Now, the way I work on doing panos is I import everything in Lightroom. And you, will, you can purchase all these RAW files if you need to. I'll show you later on so you can follow along. But basically, that's how I go. I'm going to retouch the first photo. And I shot this um, in manual mode. So if you look at the speed uh, here, this is a 4.5. I shot this at 4.5 at 150 of a second. Now, the, the island was a bit far from me. So I believe that 4.5, I looked and I still had a sharp image and 150 of a second. And I shot this, why 150? Because that's the limit that I go to shoot handheld. This was handheld panorama. Now, if you look at all the photos, you will see they are at 150 of a second. Now, why is that? Well, simply because I can retouch one photo and because I'm a lazy gal and I'm gonna synchronize the retouch on all of them because it, I shot on manual. So the way I do it is I, you know, I take a measure uh, in AV mode. I look what's the average uh, measure of the scene. I see if I can do it handheld because I'm crazy about handheld photography. I don't like to use tripods. And then I put, I, I, I saw that, you know, at four five, I could get around at one fiftieth of a second. So I forced that in, in manual mode. Okay, so let's do the retouching, easy. Uh, I'm gonna open up the shadows and I'm going to bring down the highlights. I always do that. This makes an uncontrasty photo, but it compresses the tonal value of the photo. Then, and only then, I go for the whites and the blacks. So whites, I'm just going to press the Option key, and I'm going to go right until I see some pixels coming up. Okay, maybe a little bit more, a little bit more. Oh, that's too much. Okay, I'm backing this down. Okay, so now we have some whites here. And same thing, I'm pressing the Option key, I'm going back on the blacks. Okay, now, that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to increase the exposure of the photo a little bit. Yeah, something like that. And um, I'm going to do something about the, about the temperature. I think I'm going to go a bit warmer. Something around, let's see how 
Shade is doing it. No, Shade is not strong enough for me. Cloudy, no. I'm gonna bit, go a bit more than Shade. I'm gonna go to 7,889, there's something around that. I wanna warm this up a little bit. And I'm gonna add some serious tint to it, like plus 37, something like that. I like this kind of magenta tint to it. All right, I'm gonna add some clarity a little bit uh, to the photo. I'm gonna, um, no, I'm gonna look at noise. Is there any noise in that photo? Not that much noise, a little bit there. So I'm gonna do some noise dish reduction around 30. Uh, same thing with the um, color noise. So I'm gonna go 58. I'm not sure there's much color noise, but in case there is, and I'm gonna put my sharpening, sharpening around 70. Okay, I'm gonna unable the lens correction. What that's gonna do, look before and after, it's gonna take out a vignette effect, which for, to me is gonna make it easier for Photoshop to uh, merge them together. So uh, yeah, that's about it. And uh, let's check the profile. I wanna check the, um, the landscape profile, see how that does. Ooh, I like the landscape profile on this one, so I'm gonna keep to that. Okay, so now I've done all this nice work about the first photo. Um, I think my sky is too bright now. Let me think. Maybe I'm gonna back down a bit the exposure. And uh, maybe let's add a little uh, gradient, neutral density gradient on the top. So I'm gonna go for exposure, put my exposure in the back, and just make a straight gradient, very light one, something like that. Um, as I'm gonna think that gradient over the whole thing, I'm gonna make sure it's kind of straight, actually. So for that, you need to, yeah. I'm gonna make this straight. Don't wanna make it too strong though. So I'm just gonna maybe add a bit of clarity just in that gradient so that way I can see the sky a bit more. And um, yeah, maybe bring down the exposure slightly a bit more, the highlights a, a bit less. Yeah, I, I really want to, gonna, sorry, I really wanna get some details on the sky. Okay, so I'm done. You see, but it took me quite some work just for the first photo. Now I press shift, select all seven photos, click sync, Make sure check all is on and synchronize. And ta-da, all my photos are synchronized with the look that I want. And I know it will be all right. Why do I know that? Because um, you see, I, uh, I used the manual mode and I shot all these photos, you know, with the, um, the same values. So I know what's good for one is gonna be good for all the other ones. That's, um, that's a trick to go fast. All right, so now I'm gonna right click, edit in, uh, merge to panorama in Photoshop. So that's gonna launch Photoshop and it's gonna take a while so I'm gonna pause this video because I'm going for the, you know, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 21 million pixel files. So I'm gonna go for that. Okay, now Photoshop is launching. I'm just gonna click on auto, blend image together, make sure this is unchecked and click on okay. And I uh, now take a break and uh, for you, it's gonna be instant. For me, it's gonna be like 10 minutes. Ta-da! Now here's the result of the, of the blending. So that's all my layers here. First thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go into layers, flatten image. So I have just one flatten image. I'm gonna duplicate the background and then I'm gonna do some little cropping. I'm gonna do some little, little cropping. Um, I think uh, I'm gonna go into the filter on the adaptive wide angle filter. And the only thing I'm gonna do on this one is I just wanna make sure that this is straight. You know, the horizon line is straight. So I'm gonna just click here, make sure this follows the line this way. And um, yeah, right click here and click on, on horizontal. Okay, that's all I think I'm gonna do. I'm clicking on okay. So this is a very big photo. I think it's got over 10,000 pixels. It can make incredible, incredible prints because you know I have done uh, three meters long prints with this type of resolution and you get an incredible result. Check this out, that's before, that's after. Uh, now the original line is straight, I kind of like that. So um, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take this out. So for this, I'm gonna create an empty layer. I'm gonna zoom in on this part. I like to do it with a stem tool. There's many ways to do it, but for me, the stem tool still is the best for this. 
So I'm going to click on the option key and I'm just going to cut and paste the sky. Sky is a very random factor, so it's very easy to cut and paste. Okay, and basically that's it. That's all I'm doing in Photoshop. I just used it to merge it and this. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Just want to see something. If I can move this around. No, 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 because I kind of lost something there on the um, on the cropping, but that's fine, that's fine. That's the look I was going for. Okay, so that's it. Now I'm just going to go File, Close, and I'm going to finish this in Lightroom. Yes, sir, I'm going to finish this in Lightroom. I like to just use some time Photoshop just to, you know, merge things together and then get them back in Lightroom and use those Lightroom tools to finish off. So let me get the photo. Here it is. Now check this out. Uh, this is a 12,000 large panorama. Wow, 12,000, that's going to be a lot of pixels. Okay, so what am I going to do in Lightroom? Now, I already retouched it in Lightroom before I merged it in Photo Photoshop. I merged it and now I'm back in Lightroom. Well, I'm going to keep on retouching it because I love using these Lightroom tools. For example, um, I'm going to back down a bit the highlights to get even more of this stuff going on. Um, why not open up a little bit more the shadows? I'm going to open up a bit more the shadows, but I'm going to back down the overall exposure of the photo, something like this. Make this a darker again because it was a darker, a dark moment. And then all I'm going to do is a bit of dodge and burn. So I'm going to take my brush, make sure that feather is 100, flow 100, density 100. Uh, I'm going to take exposure, put my exposure up a little bit, and I'm just going to bring more of this highlights of this bright lights in the church and in the village because I want to, you know, there was a bit of life there. I just want to put more attention to it, something like that. Maybe even more. I really want this to be bright. Okay, I'm going to make a new brush, but this time I'm going to go a bit less. I want to do something here on this wall, do something here on this wall. Maybe just a little bit here, you know, just bring some kind of live dodge and burn, you know, makes more complex lightning. I like that. I really like that. Okay, something like that. Okay, perfect. Then I'm going to add a new brush and this time I'm not going to go for exposure. I'm going to go for tint. Yes, tint. And what I'm going to do is I have a brush and I'm just going to put tint to the right and a bit of yellow to the right. And I'm going to paint with color on the sky because the sky was really red there and I want to increase the warmness, you know, to make a contrast. Warm against, you know, warm against blue makes contrast. So here we are. Okay, I just want to make this a bit more warm. Okay, let's increase it even more. Add some more color cast to this, a bit more yellow. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't seem much, but that's how it was. Now check it out. Before the brush strokes, after the brush stroke. See how I, I added some red here and there and some dodge and burn. Check it out before. Look, look this part, for example, after. It's subtle, but it makes the whole difference. Okay, last but not least, I think I'm gonna recrop this. I wanna make more panel look here. Maybe bring this down just a tiny bit. Okay, press enter. And I'm gonna go down to the post crop vignetting and add a bit of vignetting effect just to make it more intense. Voila. And uh, final touch, maybe add a bit of contrast even more and a bit and back up the exposure a little bit. Yeah, something, you know, just, you know, some kind of final touches. And voila, that's the photo of the Monch Saint-Michel. Love that photo. And thank to Scott Kelby for giving me the idea to go there because I've never been there, which was a shame for a Frenchman that I am. Okay. So before I leave you, I just want to show you a couple of things. If you're, um, if you go on my website called photosearch.com, photosearch.com, and you click on App Store, you've got all my apps there. I have apps to understand the basics of photography. I have apps on making panoramas. I have Lightroom 4 training and Photoshop 66 training. They are very cheap. Each course is about two hours. I give you all the raw files. Um, it costs about ten dollars and um, you will get all that I have learned. I have you know, a lot of great reviews on this course, so I invite you to check them out and tell me what you think. 
Last but not least, I added a new page called podcast. And this podcast page, well, basically you have all my podcasts there. So you can, it's easier to find it on YouTube because all you have is my podcast. Uh, and um, you can even purchase all the raw files. For example, this, this podcast I just did, there was a lot of raw files for three euros, the price of a coffee. You can get all the raw files. You can do yourself this big panel. Uh, as it is 12,000 pixels, you can print it. Uh, you know, like 10 foot long and put it in your living room for three euros, not the price of the printing, but you cannot use it for commercial purposes. You can just use it for your own to learn Lightroom and to do your own prints if you like to. Voila, thank you for following and let's get back to the studio. All right, guys, so I hope you liked that tutorial. It was really fun being there with Scott and I really encourage you to, to check his blog, scottkelby.com. He's got an incredible blog and you have all the infos what's happening in the world of photography. He also created this association called the NAPP. Most of you must know it's this association. It costs $99 per year to be a member of that association, but you get an incredible magazine, you get incredible discounts and incredible tutorials. It's the best $99 per year I have ever spent. So I invite you to check them out on uh, the NAPP member website. Thank you for being here, guys. I hope uh, you can leave some reviews on iTunes or subscribe to this podcast or Google Plus it or share this podcast to help make this known. Also, um, I invite you to buy the raw files that goes with the podcast so you can really follow along and it also helps to support it. Thank you for being here and I'll see you next week for another great podcast, I hope.